Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Begonia Sevilla. I'm your host today. Welcome to this new episode. Thank you so much for joining us in this new episode of CT Latino News Opinion Plus. For those of you who are tuning in uh, for the first time, uh, CT Latino News Opinion Plus is a space for our opinion pieces. Every Friday, we have a new episode where we have a guest that talks with us about current events and questions the Latino community is curious to know. This week, we have Dr. Dr. Virginia Village, who is the Chief of Infectious Diseases Division at the Hospital of Central Connecticut and an Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. We are very, very glad to have you on this Latino community and other communities of color are you know that, this proportionally affected by the virus, COVID-19. So thank you for taking your time. Thank you for sharing your time and your knowledge with us. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here and have the opportunity to address uh, your, the people of the Latino community. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bueno, let's start with the first question. So we're gonna do it super quick because we wanna do a very interesting conversation and very quick conversation with very important matters on the table. First question, pharmaceuticals company, including you know, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson, vowed to not, to seek, not to seek approvals of emergency use authorization in developing a COVID-19 not to seek approvals or emergency use authorizations so uh, to, to, to create the vaccine. But it seems like the vaccine is being developed at rapid pace. So let me ask you this, how close are we to a vaccine? Well, very difficult to say for <laughs> certain. I have never seen vaccine development proceed so quickly. Part of it is there's just uh, such a need to develop a vaccine, but the technology for developing vaccines is also been developing very rapidly, even prior to the COVID pandemic. So a lot of um, technology was there and they have adopted some of what we call platforms that were being investigated for other types of vaccines and now they have adopted them to development of coronavirus vaccines. So uh, lots of reasons why things are proceeding so quickly. A lot of money has been poured into this. Uh, I heard last night there are about 36 vaccine candidates already and many more in development. So a lot of work has gone into this. Fortunately, we are blessed with having the technology available. So hopefully we'll have one, you know, end of this year, sometime next year, but it's still, it's still a little hard to predict exactly when we're gonna have a vaccine. Another question, how can we, curb the virus effect on the Latino community and black community because they are disproportionately, and they, we said before, affect. These yeah. communities are being affected so, so, so hard. Absolutely. In the state of Connecticut, uh, Hispanics have been about, are about 10, uh, 16% of the state population, yet about 29% of the COVID cases have been part of the Hispanic community. Uh, black people are about 10.8% of the state population, but about 20% of the COVID cases. So yes, the Hispanic and African-American communities have been very hard hit by this virus. And, and there are a number of reasons for this. Uh, People of color um, often don't have access to health care that they can afford. Thus, they have other chronic illnesses. Many, many, many people work in jobs where they could not stay home in March and April. And they had to go, they were essential workers, and they were as important at that time as the health care workers. Take it back, take it back, take it back were in that they kept us fed, they kept us having food and other products delivered, and just really, um, really were 
essential workers, which put them at risk of becoming infected with this virus. And many live in multi-generational communities. We've seen the spikes of the virus mm -hmm. affecting populations in different parts of the country. But in Connecticut, talking about Connecticut and New York, the infection rate is low. Why is that so? Well, I think we're all blessed to live in Connecticut right now and New York and neighboring states. Our uh, governor made a lot of wise decisions to shut the state down early on. Mm -hmm. People of Connecticut and surrounding states have listened to what the governors of those states have said and have really tried to do their best to decrease spread of this virus. This really requires an entire community approach. And I'm, I'm really proud of what the state of Connecticut has done and I encourage people, you know, I know you're getting tired of staying home and wearing masks, but we're really at a crucial juncture right now to try to prevent uh, increased spread of this virus. So I think it's, it's our lawmakers, our governor, but it's also the whole community. University of Connecticut, UConn, was one of the first universities to cancel athletics for the 2021 school year. As the chief of infectious diseases for the Hospital of Central Connecticut, were you consulted on that decision? Uh, what did you see that led that decision? I'm more of a clinician who takes care of people in the hospital and people with infections outside the hospital. But the Department of Public Health has a lot of really bright people that have been advising them on that decision. And, you know, I think our rates are low in Connecticut and the Department of Public Health and the governor wants to keep those rates low and thus are, are making decisions that are with some people unpopular but I think in the in the long run the important thing is to decrease uh, spread of this virus. What does the misconception maybe there is a misconception of the virus that is just a cold so what does it come from why people could think that or can't think that already? Well that's that's uh, that's an understandable misconception. Uh, COVID-19 comes from a, a group of viruses called coronaviruses. And there are four coronaviruses that have been circulating for many, many years and they cause a common cold. And so very similar viruses, but yet have a very different illness. This particular coronavirus that causes COVID-19 is a much more virulent virus in many people. Now, a large percent of people who are infected with this virus have no symptoms, but can spread it to others. Young people tend to have milder illness secondary to uh, coronavirus that causes COVID-19. And they may present with something that's like a cold or a bad cold, but again, they can spread to others. The difference with this virus is that it causes a much more severe illness in many cases that can lead to long hospitalizations, death, and even long-term symptoms we're seeing in some of the survivors. So although many people do well, some people don't even know they have the virus, it can cause devastating consequences in other people. And that's why it's very important to try to minimize community spread of this virus. So I don't know if you want to highlight something before, you know, we finish this conversation. I don't want to, I don't know if you want to point out any other thing besides the things that we said before, doctor. I think information is power. And uh, again, at Hartford Healthcare, we have uh, a lot of information in Spanish as well as in English. And the other thing that has come up is the um, mental health issues that have arisen in terms of, you know, this whole thing, people have lost loved ones, people yeah. are stressed, people have lost jobs, and don't hesitate to seek help if you feel that this is getting, um, to cause depression or anxiety. Hartford Healthcare has a Hispanic center at Rushford with Hispanic uh, speak, with Latin, Spanish speaking clinicians. So if you need help in, in that way, please do not hesitate to 
uh, reach out and seek help. This is a, it's a very stressful time, and many many people have a lot of stressors um, yeah. in and families, loss of jobs, you know, trouble making ends meet. So please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and your feelings about, you know, these crazy times, these very tough times we're living since the pandemic started. Thank you so much, Dr. Virginia Village. Thank you so much for joining us. Tune in next week for another episode. Follow us on Twitter, CT Latino News, and Instagram, CT underscore Latino News. I'm Begona Sevilla. It was my pleasure. And with CT Latino News Opinion Plus. So see you soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for asking me. It's a pleasure. Thank you.